Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to another Friday chart clinic. It's 11.30 with me here. I'm here today alone. Uh, Bill is on the way. Uh, however, I just want to check with you guys. Uh, you guys are hearing me well? Alright, you can't see my screen. Okay, okay. Alright, now is that better now? Can you hear, see my screen? Good, good, good. Oh, people are coming in nice and strong. Okay, good. You can hear. Okay, UEM land. Okay, another UEM land. A lot of requests. Yeah? A lot of requests coming in nice and slow. Okay, good. Hello, uh, again. Well, uh, as uh, last week, I'm not gonna do my weekly uh, market outlook. I'll do that more on our four o'clock closing bell, uh, four thirty closing bell for our premium members. And you can also catch it on the snippet on uh, probably tomorrow morning when I upload to the server. Okay, another one. What's what's in there? Yes, can hear you well. Good, good. Now, uh, uh, this is what I will be discussing today, right? Uh, there was someone sent to me much earlier to comment on new IPO IHH Healthcare for long term, and is this a dividend pay, uh, paying shares? The second one I will touch on is. Uh, what is uh, been sent in is what is an insider and smart money report? How do I use it to profit? And the last one I will talk about today is 80% uh, of an all day trade, uh, no, all day trader loses money. Now that's going to be interesting. Okay. Now let's go back to I. So these are the three topics that I'll be talking about. Is that okay today, guys? Just want to show our hands if this is all right. That's one I want to be talking today on our Friday chart clinic. So when the session uh, over, we'll go to the list of charts that most of you guys have sent to me. Uh, we'll be looking at IHH, Genting Malaysia, Tanjung Offshore, and UEM Land. Okay, another one sent me something. Sounds good. Okay, good. Right, uh, first one is IHH IPO. Now, bear in mind that I'm not a licensed advisor, so I cannot advise you if this is... A long-term investment however I can tell you what I personally think what I would do for myself and then you have to make a judge from that or you should contact your broker or your investment advisor whom you should employ or engage to advise you how you should uh, make very interestingly the other day I was talking to a gentleman in my gym and uh, he went over to a particular bank and I asked him you know I, I, he, he put in about hundred thousand to buy a certain investment trust so I spoke to him why why did you why did you do that you know uh, you know I was in the bank the other day I was talking to a lady and the lady said hey this is a good investment fund and you should buy it so he bought it that was a couple of years ago I think it's more than four or five years ago uh, he put in about hundred thousand and then he came and see me and said Martin no actually I didn't really make money at all I said okay uh, well, what has happened you know I, I went to the bank I spoke to this guy and he asked me to buy some uh, investment trust. Then I said, can you look back for that person who advised you uh, and, and get him to help you out? What has happened? He said, I don't know, even know who is he. Well, now think of it. Let's backtrack the people. That, that is a problem with a lot of uh, people who try to get advice here. See? They always try to get the free advice. You know, They talk to someone who agreed with them. And a lot of this time, this kind of free advice will get you into trouble. Trust me, it will get you in trouble. And that's why I say if it's free, I'll be very cautious. Even this Friday chart clinic, uh, it is free uh, for most of you who is a like subscriber. So use it as a precautionary, right? Be careful things that is free. I think uh, those of you who came to our workshop before tend to know that Bill and myself uh, always tell if it's free, you may end up paying more for later. Do you all agree? Just, just, right. Just let me see what's your feedback. Well, the, the second part of the story goes into now he, he's, he's talking to me. I said that, are you sure you want me to be, you know, uh, someone advising you? You know, I'm not a licensed advisor and, you know, but I say, I can trust you, Martin, because, you know, at least uh, you're accessible to me and uh, I'm able to help my, you know, able to talk to you on uh, more regular basis so that that has been good is it so what do you think about getting free advice how many of you actually get free advice these days from your friends 
uh, free websites, uh, broker, and then uh, you don't have these people accountable. Let me just hear from some of you. What are your thoughts on those free advice? Okay. Okay, good. Let's look at some of the answers that I'm uh, I'm getting here. Okay. Uh oh, someone say BS. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Any more comments about getting free advice from people who you know that you talk to? Okay. It depends. Okay. Good. It depends on what, Theo. Let me just hear your feedback. Okay. Sometimes it's sincere, but sometimes not helpful. Yeah, that's right. So at the end of the day, uh, like what I've said, uh, I did a video uh, shootout uh, for YouTube uh, that will be sent to you next week. So watch your email and that one is going to be a YouTube on how to invest like Warren Buffett and have some good pointers in there. So watch out for that YouTube uh, video uh, that will be sent to you this coming Wednesday. Okay, and then again, that's free teaching you how to invest. Okay, another one reply here. Okay, on free advice, uh, KVM and MTO. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so be careful. Uh, so going back to IH again, what I think uh, is likely to happen. Now, I don't have much of a thought on IPOs. I, I don't like IPO personally myself. Uh, I, I've spoken to a couple of analysts and they told me that, you know, uh, IHH, you have to read the prospect. But one thing I do know from IHH is that they don't have a dividend policy. Okay, they don't have a dividend policy. Means, uh, yep, nothing is free in this world. That's true. They don't have a dividend policy. But at least, you know, this uh, Friday chart clinic is almost free, right? Would you all agree? Now, getting back to the IHH. Right, so I've got just phone call coming in here. Just switch it off. Uh, so they don't have a dividend policies. Now remember what we always teach in our course as an education. And companies who don't pay a dividend, you know, well, how are they rewarding the shareholders? Right? They are merely rewarding themselves. You know, there there are some you may heard they use the, the money profits to buy big Mercedes. Uh, big car stuff like that. So as a shareholder, I want the company that I invest to reward me. So that's a for a start. And if you have the book that we talk about, dividend don't lie, uh, that we published two zero one zero. As a matter of fact, Bill and myself are working on the revise on the dividend don't lie book, where the twenty or twenty one stocks that we have, we are revising it. And if you took some of the advice I did, uh. Yes, that's right, Jason. That's correct. Whatever advice, the final choice of your relation should be yours. That's correct. Good. Now, if you have taken some of, of, of that, you would see that you have made about uh, maybe about 30 to 40 percent uh, return. I think most important is the advice that you, you get is does the person give you walk the talk? I always say this in a lot of my seminars, you know, if you're getting uh, advice from does the person, you know, uh, if the person were to sell you uh, Mway products, for example, which is, uh, in my opinion, seems to be a good stock to have, uh, does he take Mway products? If he doesn't, you know, does he buy Causeway or some other cheaper product? That's that's the thing. A lot of people tend to give you advice, but they themselves don't even involve. So that's a key point here, right? Now, if you see that as a point, the person is using it today to day, and he's doing well then you might want to take that advice. Okay, so IH again, uh, look, let's look at the chart, by the way. Uh, let's look at IH chart in here, where they are today in here. Okay, now the market seems to be breaking up to new high, you can see here, right? Well, if, if you look at it from a trading, take a pun, you know, However, going higher, you can see the volume is definitely shrinking in here. This is just merely three days, right? So you might make a small profit, but definitely I do know those people who had got in at the IPO prices would have made a lot. I think most of you may also hear about the Zinger, right? Heard, heard about the Zinger news, which is the online 
uh, games that you normally get in Facebook, they reported a, a drop in their earnings and that stock was hammered. You know, that was really hammered, it was down 30% and there was, there was uh, IPO in February. Right, I'm sure some of you heard that before. Zinger, yeah, can look at the uh, okay, oh, uh, okay, KBJ reads, okay, sure, sure, right. So that one got hammered as a result. Uh, people were uh, now taking a uh, law action class against uh, them, right. So let's see how it prevailed. Uh, they were talking a lot of insider, and that's again got to do with IPO. So I'll be very careful about IPO. Okay, so the chart doesn't tell you much. If you're really interested in IH, wait for this chart to pan itself and see what kind of support they are getting. That's the end of the day. For my advice to you, because I'm not a licensed advisor, so I can't tell you whether this is a good investment or not. But from a technical standpoint, let the chart prove to you whether it is a good buy or not. Okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about the IH IPO. There seems to be a lot of questions, people uh, coming to me about the uh, charts. Okay, I'm just going to speed up a bit. But today, the second topic I'm going to talk about is what is insider and smart money report. How can I use it to profit? Now, for those of you who is a premium subscriber, may know that at uh, four o'clock every day I publish uh, so-called. Let me just get my chart correct here. All right. Uh, as no, not this one here. Then go to another one. Let me publish a smart report here, not this one too. Okay. Let me just show you how it looks like. Okay. Let's bring up the screen. So the smart uh report is actually looking what does the insider really do? And from then over we want to see whether they are actually buying or selling. This is the one for yesterday. Okay. For yesterday, so this is on the 26th of July. Yeah, Bill is here already, Bill. Yeah. You wanna say some words, Bill? Yeah, alright. Okay, Bill is here, so let, let Bill say a few words while I pick up the uh, the stocks for you guys. Okay? Here you go, Bill. Okay. Okay, very good. Go. This one here, right? Yeah. Uh, hello everybody. Uh, good morning. Salamat Pagi. I hope everybody's okay. Um and uh, just to report uh, a major event which happened um, yesterday uh, in the morning open in New York. The uh, European uh, president of the C ECB, uh, Draghi of Italy, uh, reassured the markets in saying that the uh, euro would, uh, would never die and he'll do everything in his power to make sure the euro does not die. He will support Greece, he will support Spain, he will support Italy, he will support all the countries who are on the verge of bankruptcy. He will bail everybody out because he doesn't want the euro to die. So, the market initially, uh, they... Okay, the market uh, had a massive rally. All the European markets were up. Two, three, four percent. The U.S. was up over one point seven percent. Nasdaq was up. The commodities were up. Gold was up. Silver was up. Everything was up, and this is what we know as the uh, risk-on trade. People are willing to take risks. Now, unfortunately, uh, reality and what people say are often not the same. So, in, in my opinion, this thing is not going to last. This is a very temporary thing. Um, because the thing that stops this project is the is the Germans. So when people need money, they don't go to the ECB; they go to the Germans, and the Germans are becoming increasingly increasingly fed up with the bailouts. Um, and and, and uh, why is it the Germans say should we bail out countries like Greece, um, who promise to uh, have austerity and 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 stop hiring government workers? In fact, lay them off. And then, that, and then turn around and hire more. And uh, in fact, even the priests in Greece are demonstrating for higher salaries. And I never knew that uh, actually the, the priests of the church in Greece uh, actually get paid fat salaries by the government. That's maybe the reason why all the priests are fat. They eat very well and the public is starving. So in any case, um, this thing is not going to end well. 
In fact, another issue, the Germans now are still are going back to using marks, the German marks, the old currency uh, when they changed the, to the euro. And, the, and, and German marks are being accepted by most all shops. So the Germans are, are really great savers and very prudent and uh, they save their marks and, uh, and the Germans are really fed up with bailing out the bankrupt countries, the people who don't like to work, uh, the people who want a free ride, the people who want entitlements um, and, and getting 90% uh, of their salary when they retire for life. So the game is going to end. As all Ponzi games end, uh, this one will end. And simply because they've run out of money. There's no more money. Uh, and, and in fact, gold was very well supported the last couple of days. Uh, it had a major breakout from a consolidation. We call it clustering of closes. And we had this and lifting of the lows. And it was a no-brainer if you were trading the gold futures market. Uh, this was a gift. This is like finding, uh, you know, 10,000 ringgits on, on the road. You just pick it up and go for it. It's called lifting of the lows and cluster of closes. And when you see it, you take it. So this is from the VSA, the Wyckoff program uh, of uh, price and volume trading. And we're going to have an upcoming program. Uh, and those people who attended in the past, obviously, you only have to pay the, the small charge to, uh, to attend. Those who haven't uh, attended, I really suggest that you do. Um, I'm not sure. That, when's, when's the date, Martin, of our next one? October 20th, uh, we're going to have a, a program, and, and this program shows you how to uh, trade futures. It tra shows you how to trade shares, and it can give you an edge, and you can be in the 5% who make money when you finish this course. In case we've had, we've had so many successful graduates who now are trading full-time and, and making a much better living than working for, some, working for the man, uh, you know, being a slave to somebody. Uh, we encourage people to take their, their destiny and take their future in their own hands. Don't depend on other people. And having a knowledge of volume spread analysis will allow you to take charge of your destiny for the rest of your life. And I mean financial destiny. So money is a thing that makes the world go round. It is the blood of life. So um, I think uh, if you get a chance, reattend those who are graduates. Please uh, reattend if you have time. We've got some uh, new, uh, new uh, material to present. So having said that, I wish you guys a good week ahead, or next week, a good weekend. And be prepared for the volatility, because this European thing I don't think is going to last. Okay, and, and with that, I, I say goodbye to you. Thanks a lot, uh, Bill. Okay, that was Bill. Now, uh, last week there were a couple of requests for those people in Kuching for Bill and myself to go over to do a course, and uh, perhaps I did put up a 